3D printing our way to individual free association power and the threat to market empires or 3D printing our way to power. Market empires, course of enterprises, fear the emergence of microfacturing. My name is Paul Gordon, and I am with iState.tv, and this is today's I talk. Let's just get right into it here. So, ING, which is a self described global financial institution, recently conducted an analysis of the emerging technology of 3D printing in manufacturing. The title of the study, I think, says it all 3D printing, a threat to global trade. Now, you can read their full of report if you go to iState.tv. I am, of course, putting a link to the article that I'm using to create this video, the article that I wrote, which will be linked in both the description and, of course, the comment as well. So right on the first page, the study reveals its crucial finding that 3D printing will cut global trade by 40%. Uh, to be precise... They'll, uh, they refer to 3D printing as local printed goods, which is a phrase that I am inclined to embrace with enthusiasm. And if you go again to the article that I've linked, you will also find a link to the study itself, the PDF, that you can read for yourself. So the study acknowledges that in its present form, 3D printing is not affecting global trade to any significant degree. However, as the technology continues to advance, as 3D printing becomes faster, cheaper, as 3D printing becomes more capable of printing complex structures, structures with moving parts uh, and even electronic components built right into the build, that impact will start to be felt at the global level, or I should say the global trade level. According to this study, one scenario suggests that 50% of manufactured goods will be 3D printed by the year 2060. One scenario suggests that 40% of manufactured goods will be 3D printed by the year 2040. So what this study is describing really is something called microfacturing, though they never actually use the word in the study. Now, I have actually been a long proponent of microfacturing, and I've been following the development of 3D printing and microfacturing since I first heard of it uh, around 2003 when I used to run an online weekly magazine called Freedom Through Autonomous Living. Microfacturing has always been a key part, in my opinion, of creating the power required to live more autonomously at the individual as well as what I would have termed then the community level and what I would term now as the at the free association level. The study itself, however, is written more from a perspective of concern for the loss of global market forces over more localized market forces. The very title of the study itself reveals the perspective. 3D printing, a threat to global trade. And of course, I welcome the replacement of large-scale global market actors with small-scale, more directly accountable local market actors. This isn't to say that I'm carte blanche against large-scale enterprises. I'm not. And I'll offer a little bit more clarification to that point as, as we go on here. So the study identifies three industries that might lead the way in the development of microfacturing. The automotive parts, uh, industrial machinery parts, and consumer products industries. Now, I am inclined to add a fourth one, which I actually think might impact this growth even more, or at least as much. And that is home microfacturing to replace broken parts, to create simple tools, to create simple toys for kids, and even to create special collectibles for adults like 3D printing a Star Wars X-Wing fighter. So as I've, I've written about and talked about before, I am a self-described uh, vis-provacian, which literally means self-power. 
I created the word from the Latin words vis, meaning power, and previous meaning individual. By my definition, and I understand the nature of language, who knows if, if this word is ever picked up by anybody else, who knows what kind of, uh, how the word will unfold. But by my definition, starting out as the one who, who coined the phrase, a vis provusian is essentially one who always favors individual and free association power over coercive enterprise power wherever possible. A vis provusian is always looking to tilt the balance of power towards individuals and free associations over coercive enterprises. So power, as I define it, is really the ability to influence action, your own as well as the action of others. And there are four major spheres of influence. There is social influence, using personal or group pressure to exert negative or positive reinforcement on potential or executed action. Then there is demonstrable influence, using tangible examples to persuade the action of others. For instance, market action falls within this sphere of influence, and it's actually the the sphere of influence that we're going to mostly deal with in, in talking about the 3D printing. Ideational influence, which is using the dissemination of ideas through language and symbols to persuade action. And finally, what I would call the most undesired spheres of influence from my perspective, force influence, the use of force to persuade action. So within the sphere of force influence, there is defensive deployment of force and coercive deployment of force. The nation state, as we know it today, utilizes coercive deployment of force. That is, they use the execution of threat of force to influence action that is not, was not, violating the basic sovereignty of other individuals. Because of this, I refer to the nation state as being a coercive enterprise. Now, the question that you might be asking is, why the heck am I taking the time to outline my basic philosophy on power in an article about 3D printing or manufacturing? And the answer, the answer, my friends, is really simple. The ability to manufacture your own goods, be they, be they essentials or, or luxury items, is one of the most effective displays of demonstrable influence available to those of us today who favor individual and free association power over coercive enterprise power. So I wanted to make sure that you understood my terms when I use such phrases as influence, power, and coercive enterprise because they are essential phrases describing my perspective on the emergence of of microfacturing. And to be sure, in these iTalks, you're going to hear a, a lot of reference to this stuff because this is the primary perspective that I'm taking when I'm, when I'm looking at events around me. So the reason, well, let me back up here. If you regularly read the articles I post on iState.tv, and if you're watching well actually in my videos i haven't touched on it as much but i have in my articles on iStake.tv. i've I, I address it all the time you will notice that news about 3d printing is regularly featured and this is this is absolutely uh, no accident whatsoever uh, the reason for this is how, and how i view 3d printing it's one of the key emerging technologies that, in, in my opinion, creates a tangible source of power for individuals and free associations. A source of power that will disentangle them from systems that utilize, in one way, shape, or form, the tools of the coercive enterprise to continue to grow their market empires and protect their market empires from the emergence of, of competition. And I should note here that, that the phrase I'm using, market empire, does not simply refer to large-scale enterprises. As I said in, uh, toward the beginning here, I'm not carte blanche against large-scale enterprises. But market empire, as I'm using it, is referred to 
large-scale enterprises that rely on regulations, the laws of the coercive enterprise to protect themselves from other potential enterprises, be they large-scale, small, or, or, or other. So microfacturing in general will favor individual and local expression and empowerment Microfacturing will also be much more difficult for nation states to regulate and control. The potential for black market emergence in places where nation states attempt to artificially tamp down the emergence of a free, unfettered microfacturing market is 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 is, is really tremendous. And, and to be sure, as microfacturing emerges, you will see attempts made by nation states to artificially retard that growth through regulations and even outright bans and uh, licensing requirements, etc. And this will be done in the name of security, in the name of preserving jobs and the uh, safety and the and the regulations, the laws, the the the, the type of licensing that will be required, uh, uh, which are which are attempting to curtail this emergence of microfacturing, will be written by the same people that run the market empires now protected by the coercive enterprise to such a degree that, 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 that often the line where a market empire ends and a coercive enterprise begins is it's, it's, it's not so easy to discern. The other great threat to the emergence of microfacturing is one of the most destructive, anti-human, anti-progressive forms of control out there today. One that many so-called free marketers, and you know who you are, embrace and count as one of the bedrock principles of the so-called free market they champion. And that form of control is called IP or, or intellectual property. And if you want to know why IP is antithetical to true free markets, all you have to do is consider this fact. IP is won in courts and is won with the power of highly trained, highly skilled lawyers and their highly skilled, highly trained team of researchers. To get that kind of power behind you folks, it requires a great deal of money. Money that only a select few of the largest market empires have access to. In short, IP protects market empires and it destroys small ventures, ventures that are often driven out of business by IP trolls on the payroll of these market empires. And I'm not going to continue down the trail of, of IP. And, and really, I will probably do a number of videos on that topic in the future. Uh, but suffice to say, IP is almost as much of a threat to the development of microfacturing as the direct regulation and even banning by coercive enterprises is. That coercive enterprise is often doing the bidding of their political allies, the market empires. To be sure, the coercive enterprise will absolutely, positively, enthusiastically use IP to attempt to deliberately retard the growth of free and open microfacturing. So this is why I say it will be black market microfacturing that will eventually become the vanguard of the 3D printing revolution. Not the gray or even the white mark. Well, definitely not the white market emergence of microfacturing that you, that you see today. To a certain degree, they're going to help develop the technologies Obviously, they're going to help develop the, the, the technologies, but it's going to be the black market where you're really going to see this growth once, once the regulations and the scrutiny starts to begin on the part of the course of enterprise. And you could look at this whole ING report as this is the warning flag that's being sent up right now. They're beginning to notice. and like, hey, we don't have anything to worry about this right now, but... This is something to consider because down the road, this is going to threaten our way of life, our market uh, empires. So my prediction is this, that 3D printing will be to the nation state, the coercive enterprise, as well as the market empire, what the printing press was to the monopoly on holy scripture by the Catholic state collectively, or the Catholic state collective, commonly referred to 
as as Christendom, basically uh, Western Europe under the rule of the Catholic Church and the the kings and queens, and it was a it was a you know it was a, it was a mutual it was a usufructory relationship. The kings and the queens uh, uh, legitimized themselves through the Catholic Church, and the Catholic Church. Uh, had its had its own rules enforced by the the magistrates by the armed uh, servants of the kings and queens. So the emergence of the black market of the pamphleteers and the the renegade printers that that happened shortly after these printing rules and regulations started to take effect. People like John Wycliffe. And William Tyndale, both of whom dared print the Bible in English, at the in the end, it, it couldn't be prevented. I mean, sure, they 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 took out a few people. Uh, Wycliffe escaped death, although his bones didn't. That's another story. Uh, William Tyndale, however, did not. He was he was he was eventually killed, uh, executed uh, by the state in the name of uh, preserving the monopoly on information, essentially. Uh, so, so in the end, the monopoly on Holy Scripture, really the monopoly on information in general, was, 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 was ultimately surrendered. So I predict the same types of actions will happen as microfacturing emerges. There will be great efforts made to hinder this growth, to prevent the breaking of the monopoly on markets by market empires in league with coercive enterprises, because... Because just like the the Catholic Church and uh, the, the 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 monarchies, the, the 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 two rely on each other very significantly, M- not in quite the same way, but they rely on each other for their sources of power. So, I believe that that these the that the great course of enterprises, I believe that the the great market empires, uh. I don't believe that they'll be able to control the natural human tendency to want to be self-reliant, self-sustaining, self-empowering. If if human beings are given a dem- a demonstrable choice, and this is what we're talking about, demonstrable influence. If they are given the demonstrable choice, they will choose it. I don't believe necessarily that they'll choose it ideationally, and I don't necessarily believe even, I don't think a social pressure would necessarily emerge. Uh, it would in time, certainly, but it's, it's, not, it's not going to be the leading edge. Uh, and I don't think that the use of force to get human beings to be self-reliant is, well, it's kind of a contradiction. It doesn't work. So, so the most effective sphere of influence to move individuals towards that that notion of being self-reliant, self self-sustaining, self-empowering at the individual and free association level, it's it's right here in in the demonstrable sphere of of, of influence. Microfacturing will demonstrate the advantage of individual and free association small-scale enterprises over the top-heavy coercive enterprise-dependent market empires. Now sometimes Large scale enterprise is more effective, but often the and, and and I'll say that I don't say that with absolute certainty. I'm not 100 percent sure that that's true, but I I strongly believe I strongly suspect that it is true. Uh, but often the effectiveness of large scale enterprises over small scale enterprises is largely in its ability to call upon the guns of the coercive enterprise to protect itself from small scale enterprises. So in conclusion, the age of the market empire is coming to an end. The age of the individual, of the free association, is soon to take its place. So this has been your iState talk for the day. My name is Paul Gordon of iState.tv. If you like this video, be sure you like, share, comment, all that stuff. And above all else... You need to subscribe. Subscribe right there. You hit the squill. It'll be red for you. And then you hit that bell. Hit that bell right there. You get the notifications for all of the latest videos as we release them. So I am Paul Gordon, and I will say have a good day, and we'll see you when we create the next.